there's always more. So as I said in my first auxiliary percussion crash course, there's way more than just bass drum, cymbals, triangle, and tambourine. But the good news is, most of the rest of our little toys aren't as in-depth as those. So we can talk about a lot more today. So let's start off today's crash course with the gong. So if I can be a little pedantic here, technically this is a tam-tam. A gong is usually smaller and has a more definite pitch. Some gongs even have nipples. Tee hee. But a tam-tam does not. Now chances are when you think of the word gong, you imagine this sound. Well, that's the thing. If you're playing a piece and the composer is asking for a gong to be played, usually what they mean is one of these things. Now, in order to play the gong or the tam-tam, you need a gong or tam-tam mallet. Now, the thing to know about the gong is that if you strike it without preparing it first, it's gonna sound a little different. So if you hit it dead, you get a sound like this. Whereas if you get it ringing a little bit, you get a slightly fuller sound. Also, notice how I wasn't hitting in the dead center. Just like with bass drum, it sounds a little different if you hit it more in the sweet spot, more like directly below the center. And if you have to do a roll, it's not like on snare drum where you have to do so many strokes just to get a consistent sound. All you need to do is just be consistent. You don't even really need two mallets. And just like with the suspended cymbal, if you need to mute it, use your whole body. And here we have the Rehearsal Disruptor 3000, also known as the wind chimes. I use air quotes because technically this instrument is called a mark tree. But just like with the gong and the tam-tam, when a composer asks for wind chimes, this is what they mean. Conversely, this right here is called a bell tree. This is not a mark tree. This is a mark tree. So if you see a composer ask for mark tree, this is what they mean. If they want a bell tree, they will ask for this thing. So anyway, when it comes to actually playing this thing, obviously it makes a lot of noise. And it keeps making noise. So if you have to mute it, use your whole hand and move away slowly. It's not always gonna be perfect, but it's the best way to do it. Now, when you actually play this instrument, don't touch the bars because you might actually interrupt the sound that way. Instead, touch the strings at the top. Nice and full and clear that way. And uh, while we're on the bell tree, all you have to do is use an implement that you would use for a glockenspiel, like a hard marble or glass or some sort of brass mallet. And do it like that. This is a shaker. Can you tell? So this is an egg shaker. They're usually pretty cheap. You can buy them for like a dollar at any music store. And all you have to do is to shake. But here's the trick. A lot of people use their wrist and that kind of produces a bit of an uneven sound. Hear that, it's more out than in. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep your wrist straight and just use your elbow and your arm to go back and forth. You get a more even sound that way. But sometimes you need to pull out the big guns. Shakers come in all different shapes and sizes and some are even made of metal. Depending on the sound of the piece you're playing, you may wanna try out different types. This is a wood block. You can hold it or you can rest it on any sturdy surface to play it. Just make sure that the slit is facing the audience because that's the direction the sound's gonna travel. Now the best implements to use for woodblock are rubber mallets. Now you can use regular old drumsticks, use the backs of them, but that sounds a little too woody. You can also use hard marimba or vibraphone mallets, but that also sounds a little hollow you're gonna get the best results from rubber. Oh, and if you have to do a roll, please don't do double strokes. Just use single strokes. Now these right here are jam blocks. You can hit these with just about anything. In fact, they actually sound better with drumsticks. And these are temple blocks. 
Just like with wood blocks, it's best to use rubber mallets, but using drumsticks isn't the worst thing in the world. But it's best to use the back of the sticks and play on the edges, if you have to. Please be aware that this is no substitute for a wood block, however, because they do have slightly different sounds. Still though, these things are a lot of fun. The claves. When you play these, you're not banging them together like drumsticks. You're holding one still and using the other one to strike. Now make sure that when you hold them, you're not gripping too tightly because if you do, they're not gonna have much of a resonant sound. So try to hold with only about three fingers with both hands. Takes some getting used to, but sound will be worth it. And just like shakers, they come in different styles. Like there's granite, and there's wood. Groovy. So what do you do if you have to play an anvil on a piece? Do you have to call up Acme? Nope, just go to an old junkyard, find a break drum. Play it with the back of your drumsticks. You can also play it with xylophone mallets or brass mallets. Just please use earplugs. Castanets. This one's pretty straightforward. Don't play it on a table. Play them on your knee. You can play it like that, or you can use a chair, just like we talked about with the tambourine, and this is a ratchet. If you need to play loud, you don't need to go crazy because it's difficult to get a good consistent sound that way. All you need to do is keep rotating at a decent speed and you'll get the sound you want. Also, if you have to make a short click sound, you don't need to touch the wheel and do that because you may not get a full sound that way. Instead, try a quarter turn. Like that. Well, I guess that's everything. Okay, fine. Here's the cowbell, you play with a drumstick, you play on the big part for a lighter sound, play on the edge for a deeper sound, hold it up here to mute it a little, hold it down here to mute it a lot. And you can also put it on a stand, just like a tambourine or a jam block and use two sticks, whatever. There you go, there's your cowbell. Have you gotten enough? Do you feel better? Do you, do you not have a fever anymore? Is the only prescription more Would you look at that? That cow got milked. Well, that's all for today, friends and fellow musicians. If you enjoyed this, you have any questions, or you're mad that I didn't use enough cowbell, let me know. And be sure to subscribe and follow me on all my social medias, and visit OvertonePercussion.com to see everything that I offer. Hope to see you in the next one.